Defense Bill, which was signed into law just a couple of weeks ago in upstate New York. There was a statement on uh, a tribal water issue in uh, Arizona. You know, so he was very involved. And that's why when we saw the statement from the family yesterday morning, you know, we all thought that, you know, that that was a signal. This was not from John McCain. And even though John McCain was not there, you know, he made his position uh, known on Gina Haspel, for instance, the CIA director. He was very concerned about her record on enhanced interrogation techniques or torture, as some might call it. And and he's expressed that he thought she should be rejected. And, and he indicated in his statement back in May that he wouldn't be able to vote, but he thought that his colleagues should you know, follow his lead. And I remember talking to Jeff Flake, the Republican senator from Arizona, who said, you know, that carries a lot of weight. And Dianne Feinstein from California said sort of the same thing. Now, they went ahead and confirmed Gina Haspel as the CIA director, but people were looking from these me- for these messages from John McCain from Arizona uh, to weigh in, even on Brett Kavanaugh, uh, you know, and that was very telling. He didn't say how he would you know, consider Brett Kavanaugh. He didn't say he was going to meet with Brett Kavanaugh because he hasn't been here. But he said, he said, I hope the Senate, you know, considers him and in due course and does a thorough review and vetting of Brett Kavanaugh. And that kind of indicated uh, back in July when Kavanaugh was nominated that we didn't think we would see John McCain come back uh, to vote. And, and, you know, we, we've talked often about the fact that he did have conservative views, but that he also reached across the aisle many times. Can you talk to us again about the significance of that? One of the most significant pieces of legislation that has John McCain's name on it is the McCain-Feingold uh, uh, campaign finance law. Now, to be clear, the one that was ultimately signed in, into, into law was not the McCain-Feingold ha- version. It was a House version by... Uh, uh, Chris Shays and Marty Meehan uh, from Massachusetts. But basically, when you see those television ads and they say, you know, I'm so-and-so and I approve this message, that all came from that from that piece of legislation. And again, working with a pretty liberal Democratic senator, uh, Russ Feingold from Wisconsin, that was very reflective of John McCain. I remember there was an energy bill that was uh, up in the Senate in 2004, and he was absolutely appalled at how many lobbyists. He, he said to me in the hallway, he said, he said, I don't think I've ever seen so many lobbyists in the Capitol. That, that sort of, of influence uh, concerned him greatly. And that, there was a bypro- this was a byproduct of something that happened to John McCain. He was part of the Keating Five. These were five senators who got in trouble for you know, some indiscretions with, uh, with the savings and loan crisis back in 1989, uh, taking trips and so on and so forth. The Ethics Committee uh, came down pretty hard on some of the other senators, Alan Cranston from California, uh, John Glenn from Ohio. Uh, but they basically you know, hit John McCain the least, and, and he, he survived. Uh, that kind of changed John McCain and the reason that you saw things like the McCain-Feingold finance law, campaign finance law, because you know, it, 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 he evolved in that sense. I got a message this morning from Mike DeWine, uh, the former uh, Republican senator from Ohio, former House member, and he told me something I didn't know about John McCain. Mike DeWine is running for governor in Ohio right now, and he said, you know, we came in as freshmen in 1982 into the House of Representatives. He served for four years in the House before moving to the Senate, being elected in 1986, and he said, John McCain was our class president. He said he was a leader even then. And I did not know that in 1982, when John McCain became a freshman in the House, that he was the class president. Chad, always a leader, always a leader, according to everyone, and against always reaching across the aisle to to try to come to agreements and make things better. Uh, Chad, we're going to come back to you later. Right now, we are going to take it over to Fox News Channel correspondent Alicia Acuna, who is joining us live now from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and, and Alicia, what is the what is the mood there? Hi, Marianne. Well, as you know, this was expected at some point, but it's still incredibly okay, difficult I'm for the people of Arizona, who he represented in the U.S. Senate. And at on Capitol Hill since 1982. And we are hearing from his wife of 38 years, Cindy McCain on Twitter. She writing, my heart is broken. I am so lucky to have lived the adventure of loving this incredible man for 38 years. He passed the way he lived on his own terms, surrounded by the people he loved in the place he loved best. What she's referring to 
is the family ranch about 90 minutes north of here in Cornville, Arizona. It's just about south of Sedona, Arizona. They have this vast family ranch, um, one of his favorite places on earth, as she mentioned, and he has been there since December. He made his last vote in the U.S. Senate on December 7th uh, and then returned to Arizona, had spent some time with doctors and in hospitals, but ultimately uh, departed this earth at his favorite place uh, there in, um, in northern Arizona. He has been receiving family and friends. Visitors have been going in and out of their the ranch area here this week. Um, also, we heard from Megan McCain, his his daughter. She um, on Twitter also issued a statement uh, posting it by first saying, I love you forever, my beloved father, and then explaining that she was by his side as he left this earth, just like he was by her side on the day that she was born, and that she says that he, she, he taught her what it meant to be a man, and he will be forever missed. So, Marianne, right now, a tremendous amount of sadness. There will be plans to be made uh, to honor this man, this hero, this American hero here. Uh, at this point, the family is simply in mourning. Marianne. And Alicia, as you were speaking, we're seeing pictures of, of Megan uh, with her father. Um, many touching tributes coming in right now, uh, including from his good friend, Senator Lindsey Graham, as well as Melania Trump and President Obama. He did it on his own terms, earning that nickname, the Maverick. Uh, we've got continuing coverage here on Fox News Channel now. We're going to go ahead and toss it over to Judge Jeanine Pirro for more on the life of Senator John McCain. Breaking news tonight, Arizona Senator, war hero, and former presidential candidate John McCain has died. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. McCain's death comes just over a day after it was revealed that he was no longer seeking treatment for brain cancer. McCain was diagnosed in July of last year. McCain was born August 29, 1936. The son and grandson of four-star admirals, McCain graduated the Naval Academy in Annapolis in 1958 and later flight school in 1960. At the start of the Vietnam War, McCain volunteered for combat duty. In 1967, during a bombing run, his plane was shot down. He was captured and held as a prisoner of war until 1973. For his service, McCain earned the Silver Star, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and Distinguished Flying Cross. After his release, he served as a Republican congressman, then later senator from the state of Arizona. McCain ran for president for the first time in 2000, but lost a heated primary season to former president George W. Bush. He eventually secured the nomination in 2008, but lost the general election to former President Barack Obama. Fox Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel takes a look back at the long and distinguished career of Senator McCain. John Sidney McCain III was born in 1936 at a naval air station in the Panama Canal Zone. McCain's father and grandfather were both four-star admirals the family moved often between bases on the mainland and abroad. It was inevitable he would pursue a Navy career, and Ensign McCain graduated from the Naval Academy in Annapolis in 1958. As war broke out in Vietnam, McCain volunteered for duty. He flew attack planes against the North Vietnamese and escaped serious injury in June 1967 when a rocket aboard the aircraft carrier USS Forrestal accidentally struck McCain's plane. Explosions and fires killed 134 people. I felt this tremendous blow to my airplane and saw the fire coming out, so I probably had uh, reacted a little more quickly than the, those in the planes near me. Some of those in the planes near me didn't, uh, didn't survive. On his 23rd air mission on October 26, 1967, his plane was shot down, this time during a bombing mission over Hanoi. The North Vietnamese captured him and moved him to the infamous Hanoi Hilton prison. He was terribly injured, uh, fractured arms, broken knee, uh, left arm was out of the socket. He had not been uh, fed and uh, basically he was uh, starving to death. 
McCain's captors offered him early release because he was an admiral's son, but he refused. He endured torture and more than three years in solitary confinement. He said Air Force Colonel Day saved his life. Bud Day was the most steadfast, uh, the most inspirational, and the toughest of anybody that I must have something to do with his Iowa upbringing. McCain was released in 1973 and awarded silver and bronze stars, a purple heart, and the distinguished flying cross. His wounds left him with impaired physical abilities for the rest of his life. He retired from the Navy as a captain in 1981 after marrying Cindy Hensley, a teacher from Arizona. He moved to Phoenix and got into politics, serving two terms in the House of Representatives. He was elected to the Senate in 1986, where he developed a reputation as a maverick. While he voted with his party most of the time, it became clear he was willing to buck Republican leadership and occasionally align with Democrats. McCain's political career hit a bump in 1989 when he and four other senators, the Keating Five, were implicated in a savings and loan scandal and accused of corruption. A Senate Ethics Committee investigation found that though McCain used poor judgment, he was not guilty of any wrongdoing. McCain said that experience inspired him to co-author the McCain-Feingold bill on campaign finance reform with Wisconsin Senator Russ Feingold, which finally passed in 2001. And as chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee, he took on the tobacco industry with legislation to increase cigarette taxes. McCain published a memoir, Faith of My Fathers, in 1999. It became a bestseller and later a film. In the meantime, he announced his candidacy for president, appealing to independence, and traveling aboard the Straight Talk Express. But after defeat in South Carolina, Texas Governor George W. Bush gained momentum, and McCain went on to lose nine of 13 primaries on Super Tuesday. He withdrew from the race in March 2000, returning to the Senate. The senator threw his support behind President Bush and the Iraq War, but he later criticized the Bush administration for not sending enough troops to Iraq. He became the first Republican senator to demand Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld's resignation. We're in one heck of a mess in Iraq, and the American people told us loud and clear last week that they're not happy. They're not happy with the course of this war. Neither am I. He also continued to partner with his colleagues on the other side of the aisle. McCain and Democratic Senator Ted Kennedy made a push for comprehensive immigration reform, though the legislation failed to pass both houses. With President Bush's second term coming to a close, McCain again announced his candidacy for president. I do so grateful for the privilege this country has already given me, mindful that I must seek this responsibilities for reasons greater than my self-interest. This time, McCain won the majority of delegates on Super Tuesday, and then in the March 4th primaries, giving him the lead he needed to secure the nomination. McCain's surprise vice presidential pick was Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Together, the two surged ahead of Democratic candidate and Illinois Senator Barack Obama and VP candidate Joe Biden in the polls following the Republican National Convention. But Obama gained momentum and ultimately defeated McCain in the general election. These are difficult times for our country, and I pledge to him tonight to do all in my power to help him lead us through the many challenges we face. As ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, McCain remained active on foreign policy. He rallied for military intervention in Libya against Muammar Gaddafi, pushed for democratic reforms in Egypt, and called for withholding U.S. aid to the Egyptian army after it ousted President Mohamed Morsi and his Muslim Brotherhood party. He also publicly criticized the Obama administration for its handling of the September 11, 2012 attack on the U.S. diplomatic mission in Benghazi that killed four Americans, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. Have no doubt, we are holding the President of the United States responsible, and he is responsible, and he has not, and he has given contrasting versions of events uh, to the American people. In 2015, McCain became chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee and used the platform to push for an expanded U.S. military presence in Iraq and Syria and a new strategy in Afghanistan. We need to have a strategy to win. The strongest nation on earth should be able to win. As the 2016 presidential election candidates began to emerge and he campaigned for his own Senate re-election, McCain pledged to support the eventual Republican nominee. He later pulled his endorsement of Donald Trump, citing their differences on public policy issues like national security and Trump's controversial comments about women.
Then in the midst of his sixth Senate term, he underwent surgery to remove a blood clot above his left eye and was later diagnosed with an aggressive brain tumor. Despite a poor cancer prognosis, he remained a dominant voice in the Senate, at times going against his own party's efforts to repeal and replace Obamacare. In July 2017, some senators audibly gasped as Arizona Senator gave a memorable thumbs-down gesture on the floor. McCain cast the deciding no vote, which killed the GOP's health care measure. All this as McCain released another memoir in his final days, The Restless Wave, a brutally honest assessment of his highs and lows, personal and professional. The Maverick Senator offered this candid assessment, writing, I'm not sure what to make of President Trump's convictions, his reaction to unflattering news stories calling them fake news, whether they're credible or not, is copied by autocrats who want to discredit and control a free press. Flattery secures his friendship, criticism his enmity. In an audiobook excerpt, the man who made public service his life's passion reflected on what he considered his unfinished legacy. Maybe I'll be gone before you hear this. My predicament is, well, rather unpredictable. But I'm prepared for either contingency, or at least I'm getting prepared. I have some things I'd like to take care of first, some work that needs finishing, and some people I need to see. And I want to talk to my fellow Americans a little more, if I may. John McCain is survived by his wife, Cindy, and seven children. In Washington, Mike Emanuel, Fox News. And uh, we have just received a, a tweet from Cindy McCain, quote, my heart is broken. I am so lucky to have lived the adventure of loving this incredible man for 38 years. He passed the way he lived on his own terms, surrounded by the people he loved in the place he loved best. Senator John McCain, 1936 to 2018. And joining me now by phone, Brett Baer. Good evening, Brett. Hi, Judge. All right, Brett. Brett, what, who have you heard from? Uh, and, and what were your initial thoughts uh, when you heard that Senator McCabe, McCain had died? Yeah. Obviously, we knew this was coming. And when the family announced that they were stopping, uh, he was stopping medical uh, treatment for brain cancer, that, uh, you know, the days were were numbered here. I think you're going to see an outpouring of support from both sides of the aisle. You've already started to see it. President Trump has, has tweeted out his sympathies to the family, so as the First Lady, uh, as well as congressional leaders all over the place. But just in the past minute, uh, George W. Bush sent out a statement. And remember, George W. Bush ran against John McCain in the GOP primary in 2000 uh, and butted heads with him judge in numerous times when I covered the White House and the Bush White House, uh, he said this, quote, some lives are so vivid, it's difficult to imagine them ending. Some voices are so vibrant, it's hard to think of them still. John McCain was a man of deep conviction and a patriot of the highest order. He was a public servant in the finest traditions of our country. And to me, he was a friend whom I'll deeply miss. Laura and I Send our heartfelt sympathies to Cindy and the entire McCain family, and our thanks to God for the life of John McCain. That's from George W. Bush. Uh, Beautiful words. President. Beautiful Obviously, words. Obviously, President Obama has put out a statement, Joe Biden. I think what you're seeing, Judge, is reaction to the death of a man who was unique in Washington. Uh, and, you know, I think there's there are going to be a lot of people looking back at his life and all that he did uh, for the country. Serve the country, not self. Well, you know, what, it, what is so striking is, uh, is all of the things or are all of the things that he's accomplished. I mean, you know, there were uh, 23 bombing missions that he was on. And, and then, you know, his political life, as well as, uh, you know, writing a bestseller, winning six Senate elections. Uh, but I think probably what he would be remembered most for is the fact that he was a maverick, that he was someone that wasn't as concerned about politics as he was about what he believed in. That's right, Judge. Uh, just in the past second, as you were talking, Sarah Palin, his vice presidential nominee, puts out a statement. Today we lost an American original. Senator John McCain was a maverick, 
and a fighter, never afraid to stand for his beliefs. John never took the easy path in life, and though sacrifice, through sacrifice and suffering, he inspired others to serve something greater than self. John McCain was my friend. I will remember the good times. My family and I sent prayers to Cindy and the McCain family. That from Sarah Palin, his vice presidential nominee, who, you know, he obviously in, in years later uh, said that, that he had, you know, doubts whether that was the right pick. But the fact, you know, you're seeing all kinds of statements uh, from all kinds of ideologies uh, because he was kind of bigger than Washington. And uh, uh, let me just interrupt for one state, uh, one moment. What we're seeing now is a flag uh, being lowered to half mast at the state house. Uh, in Arizona. Um, you know, uh, Brett, all of the people who will be uh, referencing uh, the impact that John McCain had on their lives, I guess, were able to see so many sides of him. Uh, you know, not just the the fighter pilot, not just the politician, but, but the statesman. I mean, the man who uh, was chairman of the Armed Services Committee, who could comment about wars and Benghazi and Iraq, and, and everyone would certainly take him uh, and what he was saying seriously when it came to the, uh, the, the, the art of war, if you could call it that. Yeah, I mean, listen, he was controversial at times, and uh, he fought for things and fought against things that went against not only his party, the other party. Uh, he was very uh, adamant uh, that, that uh, the fight against al-Qaeda should be uh, very strong. Uh, he was a big proponent of uh, a kind of big, strong military. Uh, he was not a proponent of any kind of torture or right. enhanced interrogation techniques. And that was a pushback that he made for the, in the Bush administration. Right. Uh, he had a lot of power as the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, and uh, the military revered him. And you've seen statements from Secretary Mattis and others already tonight. Well, and also, um, in addition to aggressively pushing for an expanded U.S. military presence in Iraq and Syria, uh, and he, he also, I, I guess, true to uh, uh, his personality, caused a stir in 2013 when he ventured uh, into Syria to meet with opposition leaders whom he hoped could topple Bashar al-Assad. He did. And, uh, you know, some of those pictures uh, were questioned about who was who and why was McCain meeting with them. He was always pushing, uh, mm -hmm. felt that the Obama administration really dropped the ball as far as uh, getting the, the opposition organized in Syria and was a big uh, talker about the red line that no longer was a red line for President Obama in Syria. Yeah. Uh, he was also very critical about Iraq and, and how that, that was being operated and how uh, the military was being handled. Uh, he, Lindsey Graham, uh, Joe Lieberman, uh, others, they had uh, a, a number of different senators who stood with them uh, on foreign policy issues particularly. And, you know, um, just following up on the, the, the issue of the military, uh, Senator McCain had opposed a repeal of the military's ban on openly gay service members, uh, but said he'd work to see the new policy uh, was effectively implemented. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, he, that's the thing. He, he was firm on his conservative beliefs in one way, and he was pushing against some elements of his party and another. That happened throughout his career in the Senate. It happened when he ran for president. Um, and, you know, I, I think people will look back at some of the stances he made and say this was a stance on principle. If you go back and look, Judge, at the last speech he makes in the well of the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, that is his philosophy. That is John McCain. And uh, it's worth, and I, I bet, in next 
day or two, there'll be a lot of pointing back to that speech. Well, I'm, uh, well, I'm sure we'll probably pull it up uh, very soon. But last question uh, to you, Brett. I mean, you were in Washington. Uh, you had occasion to know the man, the senator. Uh, and, you know, I get the sense, and, and I've had him on, uh, he's been on this show, Justice, a few times. But I, I get the sense that he was always a guy who was in a rush, that he had a lot to do, that there was always a lot going on in, in his head. Tell us about the personal John McCain, you know, when you were not on camera with him and, and, and the little back and forth you might have had with him. He was a jokester. He was, uh, he loved, like, kind of giving you a little uh, needle uh, here or there. He uh, loved uh, popping in. Uh, and just waving and saying hi. We had an online show after special report uh, on Wednesday nights for a, a long time, and he was doing a, a live shot, I think, with Greta Van Susteren in the studio next door. Mm -hmm. And we were in the middle of talking, and he just popped in. He just walked right into the <laughs> studio in the middle of the of the online show, which was great because it was the online show, and we just let things roll, and we turned the camera, and he sat there and and just talked to us. And I took my microphone off and held it out. Um, he was just kind of a, a freewheeling spirit uh, and loved to joke with, uh, with reporters, especially the ones on Capitol Hill. I was there on the night of the health care vote, and ah. he was essentially teasing all of those reporters about uh, standing outside the Senate about how he was going to, how he was going to vote. Really? Um, what was he saying? He had kind of an impish, impish uh, grin. When he would uh, uh, when he would walk by you. Interesting and uh, quite a notable evening, uh, Brett. Thanks so much for giving us insight into uh, the personal Senator John McCain. And if you're just joining us, Senator McCain uh, has passed uh, this evening. And uh, right now we have a tweet from President Donald J. Trump. My deepest sympathies and respect go out to the family of Senator John McCain. Our hearts and our prayers are with you. Again, Senator John McCain passing this evening. Uh, and uh, we, we have uh, Senator Mike Huckabee. Uh, we're going to go to him right now. Senator Huckabee. Okay, I'm sorry, Governor Huckabee. Uh, Governor uh, John McCain, I assume that you knew Senator John McCain. Yes, I did. You demoted me there for a minute, Judge. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, many people may not remember, but I came in second to John McCain at the presidential nomination process back in 2008, so I got to know him quite well. We shared the stage in many presidential debates, um, spent a lot of time with him. Uh, he beat me for the nomination, but as soon as that happened, I was very happy to endorse him. I campaigned vigorously, f not only for him, but with him all over the country right up until the, uh, the day the polls closed. I never had a regret about that. Uh, I found him to be an incredibly uh, gracious and grateful person for this country. And the truth is, even though we were political opponents, we were never enemies. We never had a crossword in that entire process. Um, but th that's kind of the nature of John McCain. Uh, there, there are many great things I remember, one of which is in a campaign stop uh, here in Little Rock, where I am tonight, uh, he came to campaign and we were at a barbecue restaurant and he did the obligatory handshakes, but what he really wanted to do was get back in the kitchen and see how they were doing the, the barbecue, how they were smoking the meats, because he uh, is known as a very uh, effective and uh, uh, quite the connoisseur of good barbecue. And so he was always learning what the tricks of the, uh, the trade were. And so he spent more time in the kitchen with the owner of the restaurant asking all kinds of detailed questions about the temperature, length of time, preparation for the ribs and the pork butts. And you could tell that he was totally absorbed it. And finally his aides had to say, Senator, we have a presidential campaign we have to attend to. We're going to have to leave this kitchen and have to leave uh, this incredibly huge smoker. But I, it was just, a, a, for me, a poignant moment of, of a person who was not only a senator and at that time presidential candidate, but he was also a human being who loved just to be able to 
uh, cook for his friends and his family, and it gave a side of uh, John McCain that a lot of people probably never had the chance to see. Well, you know, that's very uh, interesting, Governor. I mean, you know, we knew he was a pilot uh, and a politician and, uh, you know, an author, but we didn't quite know about the cook part of it. But I get the sense uh, from, from everything and the little that I know about uh, Senator McCain, Governor, that, that he was a guy who was in a rush, that he always had a lot to do, that he he was not uh, a person who would suffer fools and certainly not a person who would waste time. Is that accurate? That's a very accurate assessment. He was uh, a person who was well studied. He understood the issues. He was very astute to what was happening. His passion was national security and the military. I think that makes sense, having been a Naval Academy graduate, fighter pilot, POW, he was especially passionate to, uh, to ensure that America did not engage in uh, methods that he believed were torture because he had been the uh, subject of, of being tortured mm -hmm. during his years of captivity. Uh, nobody can take away from him the courage that he had when he was given a chance uh, to get out of captivity early because of the status of his father and grandfather as admirals. He refused. He, he said, no, I'm not going to go unless everybody gets to go. Now, how many people would do that? A lot of people would have said, well, I'll do everything I can to get you guys out, but I'm checking out of here. They're going to let me go. And he didn't. He voluntarily stayed with the other POWs because he didn't feel that he should be treated differently because that his father and his grandfather were highly decorated uh, admirals in the U.S. Navy and had such a remarkable and stellar career. And that says a lot about, I think, his character and his integrity. Uh, you know, people have said that he was a maverick. That's kind of a way of saying he could be a contrarian. He would sometimes yep. uh, go against his own party, go against even sometimes his own vote in a previous uh, piece of legislation. Uh, but there was a sense of which uh, he was his own man. He was not a person controlled by lobbyists. He was not influenced by uh, people waving money at him, uh, as is so often the case in politics. Ah. And whatever people say, you cannot take that away from him. Uh, it is one of the, to me, hallmarks of his uh, legislative career. Whether you liked what he supported and what he uh, maybe put forth in terms of legislation, whether you agreed with it, the point is, I don't think anybody can say that he was a person who was unduly influenced by the normal pressures of political money. And that is uh, in itself a great accomplishment for, oh, for well. him as a public servant. All right. Governor Mike Huckabee, thank you uh, so much for sharing your thoughts with us on uh, the passing of Senator John McCain. And uh, joining me now uh, is Ed Henry. You know, Ed, um, we've been talking, and it, it's kind of interesting. We all know that uh, Senator McCain uh, was a, uh, you know, a fighter pilot, graduate mm -hmm. of the Navy Academy, uh, uh, you know, did uh, 23 bombing missions, kind mm -hmm. of interesting, prisoner of war, author, politician, uh, and certainly a maverick, his own man, uh, and we just found out he was a cook, loved to cook. <laughs> and, uh, but you also knew the senator. You a worked uh, a long time. Uh, covered him in the Senate, covered him on the president presidential campaign trail, many things stand out. When you talk about his service, let's not forget that his grandfather, uh, John McCain uh, Sr., and his father, John McCain Jr., they were both Navy admirals as well. Right. Uh, his father won a Silver Star during World War II. His grandfather was aboard the USS Missouri on September 2nd, 1945, when the Japanese surrendered. This is an entire family uh, of public servants, and I mention that also because I remember the senator in a quiet moment in a senator, Senate corridor many years ago, and I was asking him after one of his lost presidential campaigns, either 2000 or 2008, are you going to retire? Are you thinking about walking away? And one thing he told me that stuck out was he said that both his grandfather and father, when they retired from the Navy, they died very shortly thereafter. They no longer had a mission, had a vocation, had a calling. He said, I'm not going to be like that. I'm going out fighting. That always stuck with me. And when Governor Harkabee talks about the barbecue that he enjoyed, I was covering Hillary Clinton in the 2016 campaign. I remember being in Boston. 
Boston trying to get back from New Hampshire, and John McCain happened to be on the flight. And he said, oh, b old boy, what are you doing? I said, I'm covering Hillary. And he said, oh, God. And he rolled his eyes about really? you know, all of these candidates. He wasn't being mean to Hillary Clinton. He was saying, you know, all of these candidates, Bernie Sanders, they're all running around. I've been there, oh, done that, that and kind of, that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> he sits down, and two other things stand out. All he wanted to talk about was the Arizona Diamondbacks, because I'm a baseball fan, and he loved Paul Goldschmidt, the first baseman. And the other thing, here he was at that time, late into his 70s. He had this book on the flight, a big, thick book on the history of the Navy. So when you want to understand how someone can keep going and fighting after all this time, battling cancer, um, he was always testing his mind, always learning uh, until the final days. You know, um, one of the things that, that is so clear about him is that he is a man who didn't waste time. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, he yeah. lost a lot of time, five and a half years in a prison camp in Vietnam. Yes. And not having been through that horrifying experience, but one would imagine that you value time a lot more than all of us do because when you lose that much time uh, and you're going through such horrible abuse, uh, once you get out, you know, a lot of people would ask him, I remember covering him in the Senate, you know, how he had a positive attitude. You know, you could come out of an experience, a searing experience like that, yeah, pretty negative, pretty, pretty negative. pessimistic. Right. He, you know, look, he had his good days and bad days, and he had a temper. <laughs> Let's not gloss over that. And yeah. He had fights, petty fights, and he admitted later, oh, I, I, I got to let my temper get the best of me, Ed. Yeah. You know, when he'd have a fight on the Senate floor. I mean, I see Mitch McConnell tonight. You know, people are talking about President Trump, and he didn't see eye to eye. He and Mitch McConnell rarely saw eye to eye when I covered the Senate more than a decade is ago. Is that right? And now McConnell is putting out statements. And I'm not saying he's being disingenuous or anything. I just think John McCain was a stormy, had a stormy temper. He was a tough guy. He, as you say, Navy guy. He proudly said at the bottom of his class at Annapolis. He he prided yeah. himself on that he wasn't he's, the brainiac. That's he right. He was the I tough guy. He was, I think he specifically <laughs> said I was number five like, yeah, uh, from the five bottom. Five from the bottom. From the not bottom. From the top, and, then, and then he paused. And, uh, but I also think he said he had a lot of demerits, too. Yes. So it sounds like he was a partier. Uh, <laughs> he talked a lot about being down in Florida as a Navy pilot, getting into trouble. Um, but look, he also talked about learning from his mistakes. And obviously, somebody uh, who came out of that very difficult experience in a prison camp in, in, in Vietnam, um, he valued time, as we said, and really wanted to give back to this country. All right, it is 930 uh, in the East, and uh, if you are just joining us, uh, Senator John McCain uh, has died this evening, uh, uh, the great Senator John McCain, and uh, we are uh, right now about to go to uh, Alicia Acuna, who is at the Arizona State House. Uh, Alicia? Hi, Judge. I'd like to actually push off here and show you, if you wouldn't mind, something that was actually happening in your show. And you were showing this as it happened here at the State House. The flags here moved to half staff upon news that Senator John McCain has left this earth. The first flag to go down to half staff was that black flag there. Um, that is the POW flag, and it sat there for quite some time on its own. Uh, and then it was joined, of course, by the American flag and the state flag of Arizona. John McCain was with his family in Cornville, Arizona. That's about 90 minutes north of where I'm standing here at the Capitol in downtown Phoenix. Um, he's been there with his wife, Cindy, at his side uh, for so much time. You know, he's been there since December. He made his last vote in the U.S. Senate on December 7th, um, was having trouble with the medication and having additional health problems, came back to Arizona. And um, and I have to talk about barbecue because everybody else is talking about barbecue. He loved to barbecue at his ranch. That's one of the things he held with so much pride as, every, as, as Ed was talking about, as Governor Huckabee was talking about. It was something that he practiced here in Arizona. And that ranch up there, this family ranch in northern Arizona, is considered his most favorite place on earth. And um, his wife, Cindy, tweeted, moments after we learned uh, that he had died that her, she said on Twitter, my heart is broken. I am so lucky to have lived the adventure of loving this incredible man for 38 years. He passed the way he lived on his own terms, surrounded by the people he loved in the place he loved best. And uh, also, Judge, I spoke with uh, 
former Arizona Senator John Kyle earlier today. And as we were talking about the 18 years that they served in the U.S. Senate together, he said, you know, we got a lot done. We went a lot of places and they were so deeply sad. And this was earlier in the day, of course. And he said, you know, there's not much silver in this cloud. But if there is one little bit, it's that he is in a place that he loves so much and he is with the people who he loves. Uh, he has been receiving family and friends. The family had this entire week, we know. And then when news crossed uh, just yesterday that he had decided uh, to forego his cancer treatments anymore and just kind of go um, with the way nature was going to take him and the way this disease was going to take him, he was with the people he loved most. Uh, one of the people, obviously, he mo loved most, uh, his kids. Uh, and his daughter, Megan McCain, she put out a statement and tweeting first, I love you forever, my beloved father. And she put out this most beautiful statement saying, my father, United States Senator John Sidney McCain III, departed this life today. I was with my father at his end as he was with me at my beginning in the 33 years we shared together. He raised me, taught me, corrected me, comforted me, encouraged me, and supported me in all things. He loved me and I loved him. He taught me how to live. His love and his care, ever present, always unfailing, took me from a girl to a woman and he showed me what it is to be a man. Judge. All right, Alicia, thank you so much. And as you read that, uh, uh, those words of uh, Meghan McCain, I, I can't help but as I'm sitting here with uh, Ed Henry, of course, uh, Meghan is someone who worked with us here at Fox. Absolutely. And uh, I must tell you that uh, I see a lot of the senator in her a strong, uh, well-spoken woman, tough, who loved to cook. I've got a story for you, by Yeah, the way. you've got a cooking well, story, all right. Well, not just about and, Megan. But let, let me, let well, me just yeah. to finish about Megan. She is beautiful. She is articulate. Uh, she is quick, and she is very much her father's daughter and totally devoted to the man, totally. You're absolutely right, and I want to associate that myself with all of that and I exchanged emails with Megan McCain shortly after he had uh, announced his his battle with cancer and she was very kind of saying she, that how much she loves everyone in the Fox family uh, and I'm reminded of Lindsey Graham telling me about John McCain's mother who by the way outlives John McCain she's still alive at the really? age of 100 Roberta McCain I believe is 106 years old no kidding and she is a remarkable woman she lives in Washington DC she likes to travel a lot she still gets around still Absolutely. And here's the story that's going to blow you away. Lindsey Graham says that a few years ago, she was well into her 90s. I don't know the exact age. And John McCain, the senator, was trying to, Mom, what, what are you doing? She was going on a European vacation, like by herself, basically. <laughs> she goes to a rental car. You'll love this. A rental car counter in one of these countries in Europe and says, I want a car. I'm going to drive around Europe. And again, her son is telling her not to do this. And the rental car people say, we have rules on this. You're too old. You can't rent the car. We can't be liable for this. So she says, how much is the car? And according to Lindsey Graham, Roberta McCain, well into her 90s, bought the rental car and said, gosh darn it, I'm driving through Europe. I don't care what my son says. I don't care what Hertz or Alamo, whoever says. And she bought that car instead of renting it. I tell you that story because I think it's funny, but I also think oh, it shows it you where Meghan McCain so much. and John McCain got some of their toughness and their, and their stick to and Absolutely. their determination Absolutely. and perseverance. What a great story. Uh, and our heart goes out to John McCain's mother uh, this evening, as well as his wife and his daughter. Uh, you know, uh, I think that we're going to be joined now by Fox News contributor Jason Chaffetz. Uh, Jason, are you with us? Yes, Judge. Yes, I am. Okay. All right, Jason. I mean, uh, you were uh, chair of uh, Congressional Oversight and Reform. You worked in Washington and I'm sure had many occasions to be with John McCain. Your thoughts on his passing? Yeah, it was my honor to serve in the Congress and certainly at the time that John McCain was there. Uh, John McCain is an American original. Uh, you could never question, <laughs> question his patriotism, his commitment to the country and, and certainly to the military. I didn't always agree with him on his votes uh, or his approach on certain things, but boy, he was there to put up a vigorous debate and he spoke from his heart and he spoke uh, with determination and he was very effective. I, 
One of the other things, uh, Judge, I got to do is uh, a couple years ago, I got to go to Vietnam and I, I went to the place where he was incarcerated for years and held as a prisoner. And uh, to see that small room and to kind of feel what he might have been going through, even though I was there for a very short amount of time, it really shakes you to think that, that there were Americans that were held there for years. And so the degree of respect for Sam Johnson, who serves in the House, and a, and a John McCain, you know, it's just absolutely unbelievable what he went through. And to have that sort of perseverance and that strength and that fortitude throughout his whole career, I think is uniquely American. I really do. You know, what's interesting, I'm, I'm reading about his early life, and it actually says here that McCain's ancestors fought uh, in the Civil War, and an ancestor, Captain William Young, served on the staff of General George Washington in the Revolutionary War. I mean, that is amazing. A uh, you know, literally generations of public service, Judge, going back to the Revolutionary War. Wow, that is, that is amazing. Talk to me, uh, Jason Chaffetz, talk to me about uh, the man. What was he like when he wasn't on the Senate floor? What, was, you know, what were his passions that you know of working with him? Well, he, he was a person who was always in a hurry. He had lots to do. There were lots of issues he had to get off. I never saw him sort of just relaxing, kicking up his feet. Uh, you know, he was funny, uh, but he could also be a little bit crusty. I, I remember once we were at the Capitol Hill Club and there was some reception and he was in a line and I got in the line right behind him. Well, I'm a fairly new member of Congress and I sort of tapped him on the shoulder and said, Senator, hey, Jason Chaffetz here and, and you know, reminding him of who I was and he turned around at me and looked at me like I know who you are what are you trying to say I mean like I was somehow criticizing him I and, and he was poking me in the chest with his finger saying I know who you are just you know and then he wanted to talk about something else and then somebody pulled him out of the line but he was always <laughs> like that and nobody took it personally he just a man on the run and a little bit crusty but we all respected and loved him for it well indeed indeed and uh, as we sit here tonight thinking about what uh, he has done for this country and, and spending so much of his life in service of uh, his fellow countrymen. Uh, we certainly can't ignore the fact that, uh, that he was selfless in uh, everything that he did throughout Absolutely. the course of his life. You saw that many, many times, and uh, this is somebody who, who gave and gave and gave. And, and I think when you talk about his service in Vietnam, uh, what you have to remember, as we mentioned a moment ago, Judge, that he was uh, the son and grandson of four-star Navy admirals. So at one point in his captivity, maybe even multiple points as I recall it, uh, he was offered the opportunity to go. Uh, to leave early because the Vietnamese were trying to curry favor with U.S. military officials to say, we're letting your boy out, we're letting John McCain out. And John McCain refused to get out. John McCain refused to leave early. He said that the code was that, you, that American prisoners of war leave in the order in which they were held captive. And so when the Vietnamese tried to release John McCain and say, you know, we're going to basically curry favor with the Americans because of your father yeah, and grandma, and, you know, he refused. Uh, you know, w when you think about it, I mean, the whole thing is kind of interesting that the Vietnamese would say, because of your grandfather and your father, mm -hmm. uh, even though we're fighting you, uh, we're going to give you a pass. They not figured a pass, it'd be a propaganda coup. They figured yeah. it'd be a propaganda coup. And John McCain saw through that, even at a young age and even in distress. Any one of us in a situation like that, who knows what we would do because you would oh, want sure. to get out. Think of it. He had his arms broken. He was punished and yeah, tortured the, again and arm again. Arm dislocated. I mean, it, it was. It's amazing. And I, as I understand it, he suffered for the rest of his life from yeah. the inability to move. There some were of many his times arm. that I would see him. You know, I'd be doing a live shot for Fox News, and he'd be going to a camera just down the way in the Senate Russell Building. Uh, and right before he went on, one of his staffers would say, "Hey, Senator, come here," and they would comb his hair because he could not reach even. Aww. Into his 80s, he couldn't reach his arm over his head to comb his own hair. Yeah, those those are you know daily reminders of the scars of war. The scars of war and the determination of a man to continue to fight on. Uh, I think that we're now being joined by uh, Chad Pergram. Chad, hi. How are you? Well, how are you, Chad? Well, it's a sad night here in Washington. Uh, this is a night that a lot of people on Capitol Hill had been expecting for a long time, but they knew it was inevitable, and, and this was just the inevitable that happened tonight. 
Well, but given that, you know, you have spent, uh, um, um, you, you spend your career in Washington and, and uh, working with the uh, Congress, uh, and, and you're almost the, the, the government historian for Fox here, uh, talk to us about how uh, John McCain was held uh, uh, or seen by other members of Congress and your own personal thoughts when you heard that he had passed. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the first things I remember about John McCain, and Ed has talked about this, about, you know, kind of he was a man in a hurry. I remember one time going down <laughs> into the Russell Senate subway station. There's a subway that runs between the Capitol and the Senate office buildings, which, you know, one might be as far as about a quarter mile away. And he was, you know, in a hurry, and he kept pressing the button as though it would get the subway to come faster. And you could hear the bell ring, and he kept pressing it and pressing it and pressing it. Years ago, I think my first inter interaction with him, and this was kind of the, the, the funny side of John McCain. It was in the mid-90s. I worked at C-SPAN, and we had gone into his office to do an interview, and he had a blue pen, which he had put into his, his pocket and hadn't put the lid on, and there was this big blob <laughs> of blue all over his white shirt. And, you know, he was just like, well, you know, it's another day. And it was the first day of the Congress, I believe. I think it was in 1996 uh, or 97, I guess, is, is when that would have been. Uh, Ed mentioned him being a partisan of the Arizona Diamondbacks. <laughs> I remember he, I had a conversation with him, uh, you know, within the past year about how the Diamondbacks, you know, they had this big rivalry with the Dodgers and the Dodgers had beaten the Diamondbacks. And as you know, at the, at the stadium in Phoenix, there's a pool in the outfield and the Dodgers went and jumped in the swimming pool. And <laughs> McCain was appalled at that because they said, you know, guys, if you win, you can do anything you want, but just don't jump in the swimming pool. And he went off, you know, giving me this entire diatribe about how much he hated the LA Dodgers and how they <laughs> went and jumped in the pool. And he didn't like that. <laughs> One thing I want to, yeah. Now, a couple things we should talk about here that, that will come into play in the next couple of days. If custom holds, what will happen? The Senate comes back into session on Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock. And what we expect them to do is, Blake, uh, is drape a black cloth over his chair in the oh. Senate. Again, he's not been there since uh, December 7th. That was the last time he voted. And they'll place flowers there, and there will probably be a moment of silence to honor John McCain. We haven't heard anything. I just reached out to see if they were going to lower uh, the Capitol flags to have staff. Usually in a case like this, they wait for the order to come from the president and the Speaker of the House follows suit. Uh, the other thing that we're hearing in the, in the past few minutes, and this came in the statement from Chuck Schumer, the Senate uh, Minority Leader, he's going to introduce a resolution to rename the Russell Senate Office Building after John McCain. Now, it's named after Richard Russell, a longtime senator from Georgia. Uh, and I should point out that McCain's office is in Russell. Also, he's the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, and that committee is housed in the Russell Office Building. Uh, you know, there's one part of this. If they if they do change the uh, the building name, you know, it wasn't always known as the Russell Senate Office Building. When they first built it, it was the only Senate Office Building, and they called it, uh, you know, just the Senate Office Building or SOB. And some people <laughs> thought that was appropriate for Richard Russell. And if they rename it after John McCain, but one doesn't know. One one last point here is something else that I think is important. John McCain, you know, found himself caught up in the Keating Five scandal yes. in the late 1980s. This yes. was this issue of, of the save, Lincoln Savings and Loan and Charles Keating in Arizona. There were five senators, other senator from Arizona, Dennis DeConcini. John McCain basically, you know, I, the, the Ethics Committee, they didn't come down on him terribly hard. They came down on Alan Cranston, who was a senator from California, much harsher, but they said he used poor judgment. And McCain said later, he said that the appearance of impropriety on his behalf was wrong. Well, this set something into motion with John McCain. This was this side of him of always fighting back against power and influence. And that didn't really crystallize in him until the Keating Five. And if you look at the famous McCain-Feingold campaign finance law uh, back in the early 2000s, that is part and parcel of what he went through and said, wait a minute, we need to be careful about money in politics. When you hear those ads, and we'll start to hear a lot of them here in the next couple of months, and a candidate will appear on TV and say, you know, I'm so-and-so and I approve this message, that's a result of McCain-Feingold. I should point out that the version that they ultimately was signed into law was the House version passed by Christopher Shays and uh, Marty Meehan of Massachusetts, but it's basically the companion piece of legislation. But everybody knows it as McCain-Feingold, even though it was Shays and Meehan, because why? It's John McCain, frankly. All right. Uh, Chad Pergram, uh, senior producer uh, for Capitol Hill, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts on Thank the you. passing of uh, Senator John McCain uh, earlier this evening. Uh, and uh, uh, right now we have on the phone 
Yeah, Senator Jeff Flake uh, from Arizona. Senator Flake? Yes. Yes, Senator, uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Your thoughts tonight on the passing of Senator John McCain? Well, just gratitude for uh, having him served for so long and so well. Uh, he leaves a huge void uh, in the Senate, obviously. Uh, in Arizona, there's a huge void, and uh, there's a void in terms of international leadership as well that he, he's been so active in, and uh, he has a, a huge legacy, obviously, that we're grateful for. And uh, Senator Flake, what was your interaction? What, was you, what were your experiences with him as, as the co-senator from Arizona, junior senator you? <laughs> you know, I was just referred to as the other senator from Arizona, <laughs> <laughs> which anybody who served uh, as senator alongside McCain was always the other senator, which I, I came to enjoy. Uh, but I, I just, I'll just give you one experience. Uh, early on, when I was in the House of Representatives before I got to the Senate, I was had angered a lot of people at home because of opposition to uh, earmarks or pork barrel spending. Uh, John McCain approached me on a plane flying back to Arizona once, stuck his finger in my chest, and I thought, <laughs> oh, no, he's going to let me have it, too. 